Previously, we've said that positional number system is about an organized way of arranging basic symbols, similar to how we make names. If we establish orders among the basic symbols, and then arrange symbols following the strict positional order, then the symbol ticks contain information about the quantity represented. So unlike human names, which have to be memorized in terms of what they represent, in this section we're going to figure out a general way to back out the quantity represented from the symbol given so that we can avoid painful memorization. If you inspect the symbols, you can see that each position is cycling through the three basic symbols. It seems that the first position is taking the fastest, and third position taking the slowest. Are there any relationships among those ticks at different locations? Since each tick at the first bar represents a quantity of one, if we can sort out those relationships, it will help us to figure out what quantity each tick at a different location represents. It would be clearer if we collapse this detail into a more general view. These three repetitive symbols aggregate to a bigger size symbol. The nine repetitive symbols is replaced by an even bigger one. This way, it's easier to see the relationships among all those ticks. For example, every time the second position switches once, it meant that a full cycle of simple flipping must have completed at the first spot. This is not surprising if you think about how we crunch the two symbol combos in the first place. We flip through all the symbols at the first position first, forming a little structure here. Then we combine this little structure with each of the three symbols at the second position. Every time the second position witnesses a symbol change, it implies that a full cycle at the first position is finished, right? because only then we start appending a different symbol at the second spot. An easier way to see this is to use clock-like circles tracking the symbol status of each position, the inner one tracking the first position, the bigger one for the second position. The second position starts from O, and first position starts from M, taking once, twice, three times, finishing a full cycle. Time to take the second position once. Now the first position reset because it's back to where it starts. It will start over again, taking once, twice, three times, taking the second position once. So this is saying that one switching at the second location means that the first position switched a full cycle, which is three switching, representing a quantity of three. So one switching here represents three. Now if the first position keeps ticking once, twice, three times, finishing a full cycle, the second position is going to tick once again. But now the second position also comes back to where it starts, finishing a full cycle. Time to tick the third spot once. So one switching here at the third spot means that a full simple flipping cycle has been completed at its previous position. So one switching here represents three switching at the second position, because one switching at the second position represents three switching at the first position. If you cascade down to the individual ticks at the first position, it will represent a quantity of nine. Why is that? Well, if you think about that, before we start combining a third symbol, the second position has to finish with a full cycle. Only then we started combining symbols one by one at the third spot. Knowing what each tick at different positions represent, now let's pick a random symbol and figure out what quantity it represents. Pull it aside here. The first step is to figure out how many switching each position goes through. Starting from the third position, it switches twice from T to M. I'm using two sheep here to represent two. The second position switches once, so one sheep. The first position once, one sheep. The sheep are of different sizes because they represent different quantities. So this symbol will represent a quantity difference of two large sheep, one medium sheep, 
and one small sheep. The next step is to figure out exactly what quantity it represents. Easy. Just cascade down each size sheep into the individual one. We have 9 here, 9 here, so 18 plus 3 plus 1, so 22. Well, the difference between these two would be 22. But remember, the starting symbol represents 1, so you need to add 1 to get 23. This is what it represents. The fact that each position represents different quantities is called place value. It's at the core of positional number system. What if we want to represent larger quantity? Easy, just append more symbols. For example, what if we append one more letter? Now we have a fourth place. Just bring up another circle here, tracking this fourth position from T to O, which is one, using an extra large shape representing one. Now what does one switching here represent? We don't need to know directly. All we need to know is, it means previous position switched the full cycle, which is three large sheep, which can be cascaded all the way down by copying over the structure at the previous position, which is three nine sheep, 27. So this symbol will represent 50. So what do we really need here? We don't really care about the names. We only use those names to derive the order of those individual symbols relative to others. So what really matters are the number of switching at different positions. So if that's all we care, why don't we just create symbols representing switching number directly? Of course, we could use any symbols to represent these basic quantities. But if we were to use unfamiliar set of symbols, remember to attach a table so that people know what you mean. This table will replace the switching sequences. I'm using our familiar symbols to avoid confusions. The symbols here will represent a minimum of zero switching to a maximum of two because we have three basic symbols. This way I can tell directly that there are two switching here at the third position, one switching at both the first and second spot. Seeing this, you will know I need two of this, one of this, and one this down. Exactly the same symbol crunching process can be used to produce the new number list, except that now all the positions will start with the same symbol of zero, starting with one position at a time, flipping through the list, forming a little structure, move on to the next position, flipping through the symbol list one by one to be combined with a little structure, forming a two symbol structure. You can keep flipping and appending more symbols. But be careful. These two two were no longer representing 22. It represents two of three plus two of one, so actually eight. Now do you see the difference between numbers and names? Individual symbols in our names typically don't mean anything. So if you compare two people's names, you cannot derive one person from another based on alphabet table. But each symbol in number can tell us something about the quantity. In the next section, I'm going to show you why positional number system works so well for us. I think it helps us overcome our brain limitation to make sense of large quantities. <laughs>